Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our Tuesday morning trading session. I don't know what kind of session to expect today with the eastern, uh, or the northeast in the United States getting pummeled under a huge snowfall. Um, I don't know if the financial markets are going to be all that active today, even though the ones that we're watching are based in Chicago. What happens in New York does affect what happens in other stock markets as well. So we'll keep an eye on it here for a few minutes anyways. And of course, we've got that FOMC minute release next or tomorrow, Wednesday, which could lead the markets to be a little bit more subdued. This was yesterday's trading. And you can see we did finally find our high probability profit objective on that first eagle signal, but it sure took a while to get there. And today may be more of the same, although trading did leave off up here around 5,400, only to open down here around the 53. 85, 86 area, and that means we've got a rather substantial opening gap above the market. Don't know whether we're going to see traders try to get into there or not. Trade forecasters saying that we are in trend mode for about another 28 minutes, to be precise. says, oh, I thought they only got a foot of snow in, uh, in New York. It still makes a mess of things, though. So we'll see. We'll see how the market responds. The FOMC meeting may have more to do with with the uh, tone of the market. Just checking the uh, the news headlines here, and it looks like 6,000 flights have been canceled. Thousands of schools closed. This is all around New York, of course. Governor issued states of emergency and travel bans. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> so... Goodness, I don't need to go there today. Well, we've got a rather prolonged four arrow consolidation here in the Hawk. Maybe they are going to try to dip a little bit lower here. We're getting a trend change signal here on the Falcon as well. Yeah. 
maybe they'll give us a opportunity for a second push on the entry here the signal producing right here the low of the current bar 5382 quarter the low all told 5382 could enter try to enter a tick below there uh, things are a little dicey yet. I don't think I want to go in for two contracts. It's all still very early. <laughs> yeah, I believe it. Clayton says, foot of snow wouldn't even have slowed Colorado down. Well, I'm sure New York City is equipped for the snow, unlike those of us here living on the West Coast foot of snow pretty much grinds the city to a halt, but I think it's the wind and the rain that's coming with it. It's making things fairly miserable. Uh, Christian, good question. Christian asks, good morning, Eric. I see that you use the dynamic equivolume bars. Do you use those to make trading decisions depending on big volume bars or do you use it mo only as information? The dynamic equivolume bars is, is a feature that enables the bars to print wider on higher volume and they print narrower on less volume. It's actually quite ingenious. It, they were developed by Richard Arms, who's the same fellow who developed the trim indicator, among others. But he wanted a way to incorporate volume into his charts without having to rely on a, a volume histogram. Um, I do use it in my decision-making, Christian, um, I know that the wider bars obviously contain more volume and therefore they tend to highlight more important support and resistance. So for instance, we know that the market is showing a lot of sensitivity here around the 53, 87, 88 area. I can go back in the chart and find more bars that correspond to that same zone, that 53, 87, 88. Even though this was yesterday's session, you can see that there was still a fair amount of activity there. Compared to when the market is trending, people are usually surprised to learn that when the market's trending, uh, as it unfolds with the mean Renko bars, the volume per bar is actually quite light. So it is a nice feature to be sure. What makes the dynamic echo volume bars different from regular echo volume charting is that it will work on any chart style. Most echo volume bars only work on a time based candlestick. So whether it be a one minute or a 15 minute or a daily, but it has to be time based. The echo volume charts will work on any chart style. So they'll work on tick charts, they'll work on Renko bars, they'll work on mean Renkos. They won't work obviously on some of the fancier charts like the uh, exotic Japanese chart styles like Kagi charts or three line breaks. They won't work on point and figure charts either for fairly obvious reasons. All right, well, we're still thrashing about here a bit. Like I say, trading might be off some because of, uh, I don't know if the 
Well, the New York markets would be open. They would have made the news if they weren't open. It takes a lot to close down the stock exchange. I have a friend actually going to New York City next week. I was teasing her about it last night that she gets to go there and see the snow <laughs> after we had one of our snowiest winters in the last, well, certainly within the last decade. All right, well, we have an interesting situation going on here at the moment we've got a market that's pretty well pinched we have a cloud crossover signal here that never tripped now we're coming back with actually a number two signal i know it hasn't printed it probably hasn't printed because the clouds are a little bit of a mess here but this is a counter trend signal See, now they're coming back again. All right. Maybe we'll give it a go here to the upside. Again, I'm going to be a little bit light going in. I'm just going to take a single. I'm going to enter not on the hash mark, but rather above the high of the hash mark. Uh, we may just see the market try to get into that opening range gap. We do have a few obstacles along the way. Uh, look at this. Remember the line that gave us all the trouble the other day? What was it? 53.91? 53.92 and that's where the ultimate support and resistance suite chose to put our primary support line. But we are definitely seeing a lot of overlap here this morning, a lot of sideways trading no real commitment Just back and forth back and forth <clears throat> so let's see here yeah so there's obvious support here to shy of 5389 I suppose we could also bracket this as an OCO type order if you chose. Now with the OCO order, you need to remember these orders are live the moment you put them on your chart. And you do them by right clicking on your chart. And selecting your order. your assortment down here. Uh, 
Hey, what a balanced market. set that on the shelf for now. Here's the hawk introducing some yellow bars after a prolonged consolidation. The falcon might be working a trend change signal, but no, it's starting to get spoiled with the filter going out of sync. So far, the trend line holding its own. That may also develop into a late filter entry. We'll see about that. Of course, with the sideways range, the best strategy is to allow it to break and then retest. We're not really seeing any commitment here one way or the other. Just checked the New York Stock Exchange website and uh, they posted on their Twitter feed. Do you think the New York Stock Exchange is going to let a little snowstorm stop us? We are open and operating as normal today. All right. If you say so. And we won't blame the weather, we'll blame the pending FOMC meeting. scheduled oh no they didn't sorry my mistake Wednesday's big report day.
big report day. Yeah, that's throwing a little bit of a wrench in today's trading. Okay, well, we're getting a crossover sell signal now. Oh, and, the, and what happened there? It's supposed to be short. We'll see if they give me another chance to re enter. This now a second push on the on the signal. Come on. Well, and now they're stuck again. So I intended to short from up here, but for whatever reason, I got filled and stopped out on the same bar. We'll see whether or not we can get the market to trade a little bit lower for us. Get my cursor out of the way. Don't want to hold the market back. Yeah, I know. A, a few of you are writing here uh, telling me that your OCO just did the same thing as what mine did. I don't know why it did that. I'm After the room closes today, I'm going to do a quick little video and sell it, send it to Adam and the programming team. Usually, um, 
<clears throat> if you reboot your Ninja, or at the very least, F5 on your chart, it seems to resolve the issue. I don't know, though, why it does that occasionally. And yes, it's very annoying. All right, well, we're down to break even now. Come on, don't stop. We would have just tagged our high probability profit target. Come on. Be nice. They're pressing. This could actually run out a little bit, but I think I'm just going to take my profit if they'll give it to me. Stinkers, come on. There they go. Come on. You want to. There we go. Like I said, this has got the potential to run out, though. Next support just below us here at 53.73. I don't know if we're going to get below 53.64 three quarters, essentially 53.65. Market not anticipating good news tomorrow, I would say. Big opening gap down. A decent move lower. Nothing, you know, to get too excited about. This is our first in sync eagle signal. And we are a little better than halfway to our profit objective. Currently hovering at about the halfway mark. Have to wait a half an hour for that signal. Actually, we got a little bit lucky there that uh, given the later entry that we still found our profit objective, uh, my initial entry was somewhere around there, which would have made it much easier for the market to find our profit target. We got out almost at the low. It's probably Tony ditching his thousand contracts there that caused the market to bounce a little. First micro macro cross signal also finding its high probability profit target and reversing. Bit of a messed up um, Falcon signal here, but you could still have seen it as an OCO order, as a bracket order.
Oh, oh, it wasn't a thousand orders, Tony says. It was 842. He's letting the balance ride. <laughs> I'm not going to short it, but don't be surprised if uh, once they're below here, 53.74, we see another little dip. Oh, if they get below there. Starting to uh, retreat a little bit. Holding that 53.74 area. But it might be time for the buyers to take their turn. Working into a macro pullback, the double bottom type look that we have here is a little bit concerning. Of course, that does not mean the market cannot go lower, but what happened to that momentum? We had that nice little move down, and now all of a sudden we're moving sideways again. What's with that? So for you Raptor owners, you might be looking at a number two signal developing. We have had a teeny tiny test of the extreme here. Haven't printed a signal yet. I would expect one to print. That would be our counter trend. Here on the DTS platform, we've got a double dot signal. And do I have anything to tie that in with? 53.74. Uh, nope. Uh, so very, very close to Friday's lows. Uh, it's not that old that it's really stale yet, but it might be a little bit aggressive to try to buy that. But it is a double dot reversal signal all the same. A little bit of a macro pullback now. It's almost set up again for uh, another OCO order. It's almost easier to bracket. 
this little range that we see here and buy a breakout above and sell a breakout below. see whether my OCO is going to work this time. Ooh, I should not do that. We could see a little bit of an uptick here. I have no doubt we're going to get to the hard edge. But here is my concern. We've broken down. Now we're looking at a retest. I was looking to buy just as we go into the retest of this range. I don't know if that's the best place to be buying. After all, we should anticipate the, the resistance area to hold. Looks like it's hovering around 53.81, a little bit above, a little bit below, but still it's respecting that zone. Forecaster now says we are in scalp mode until the bottom of the hour, or pardon me, swing mode until the bottom of the hour after which we enter scalp mode. So it does not look like things are going to be getting a whole lot smoother as the morning goes on. macro pullback signal trying really really hard to get to its objective I'm down a bit. I'm going to avoid that in uh, the event we actually 
actually see a breakout here. Mm -hmm. The buyers are not letting this go. I don't know. I'm I'm thinking maybe maybe that OCO order would be worth a try. Even though, you know, I'm looking to buy into the bottom end of this trading range. Short below the lows. Breakout's coming. I don't think there's much question about that. Things have gotten very quiet. I suppose if you wanted to be ultra aggressive, you could even consider this a little bit as a range. Wow, <clears throat> and just check the clock. We have been tracking sideways for almost 20 minutes now. That's a long time.
say. You might want to make note of these numbers for tomorrow. 5380, 53, 76. Seeming to give the market some pause. says uh, that's crazy in the NQ Raptor I now have seven bars with seven red dots above the wrinkle bars I've never seen that before so I guess Christians is printing red dots all the way through here no this is unusual to be sure and this is really really risky on my part um, the market not really committed here this morning. All right, well, there they go. I think they jumped the order by a bit. Did they? Oh. So I'll put a profit order down here at the next support zone. Bring my break even down some. Uh, may require some adjustment as we go on and uh, now my OCO order worked correctly so I don't know what happened before it might have been that my stop was a little bit too close I don't know if you guys uh, Tony and Elmer if you were also running a parabolic Sometimes if your stop is too close, it will uh, stop you up prematurely. Come on, don't stop now. this work quite so hard. Take it up here to 67. So we've hit the break even. I'll force the trade to break even now. Come on, don't stop. In fact, I'm going to get really cozy on this one. There, that's all you get. Just that one bar. You're either going to 
stop me out. I'm not prepared to ride out any reversal here. Okay. Because if it reverses from here, there's a good chance they're going to try to get up here to where our break even was. We'll see. We'll make a note here. I'm making a note in my journal. So far, it looks like that may have been a good call. We'll see whether they actually get up there or not. We're really earning our keep today, though. Clayton asks, why did it hit my profit target and, and not yours? One thing when you use the OCO order, you don't have a profit objective. I manually placed a profit target. If you set yours up, you know, with the trade manager like that, you would have got down, found your profit objective. But by using the OCO, you get filled you get a trailing stop. If you have your auto break even, you get an auto break even, but you don't get a profit target. I had to manually enter a profit taking order. And then I, I brought it in. But it did not find my profit target. It came up just a couple of ticks short so I jammed my exit order just in above the high of this bar here as it was forming and got stopped out just above Clayton's asking, can the OCO orders be changed to have an auto profit objective? I don't know. But if you send Adam an email, he's the guy who can make those kinds of things happen. I don't know, Francisco. Francisco's asking, do you think a second push might be coming? It's a very good observation, actually. I don't know. So what Francisco is looking at is whenever you violate a significant swing point, oops, in this case, this would have been our swing. This is push one. Is this push two, maybe? We usually don't see more than three pushes within a trend before there's some sort of reversal. I don't know. I 
the trend definitely favoring the sellers today. Krishnan and uh, Francisco both saying we've got three legs down. We may see a reversal up. It's it's tough to get counter trend when you have a dominant trend, which I think we do this morning. So here we are, we're near Friday's lows. I don't know, that might be enough to bounce it. This was our first eagle signal, and once again, it found its profit target. The only trouble I have with that first eagle signal is actually just having the nerve to take it. Because honestly, when this is printing, I know it's a solid signal. It's our trend change signal. Everything is in sync. I should just say, yeah, hey, let's go for it. I should just set it up and take it and boom. It works more often than not. I try really hard not to get into predictive mode, however. You know, I try really hard not to say stuff like, oh, well, the market's made three pushes lower. It has to go higher now. Because you know what? That's the time it will reverse on itself and it will keep going lower. Where was that trouble spot that I was just mentioning? 375.76? A little bit of a pullback to that area certainly seems likely but not worthwhile for us. That's a good suggestion. Christian says uh, maybe we can reduce the contract size for the next uh, down trade or even the reversal signal, Christian. Whenever the market is giving you a look that you're just not sure about and you still generate a signal, you still feel you should take the signal, that's the best course of action. Just dial down the risk amount. Just change that value or just go into manual mode and throw a onesie on it. See what happens. Yes, you may not earn as much as you normally would, but it's sometimes a little easier to, to stomach. Ooh, there they go. Okay, so I was a little quick with my stop. Did hit 53.64 three quarters. Our next support zone looks like we hit it right on the bean.
So before I got too serious about a, a reversal, I would like to see a test of the extreme, some sort of failure. I think we could see a little profit taking though, now that we're down here at the 53, 64 and three quarter support zone. Makes a move back to the 53, 75, 76 area a little bit more palatable. I don't know if the Bulls will be able to muster a really strong rally here. What seems more likely is a sideways type range to develop. Tony says it's starting to snow in his part of Kansas. Well, our weather here has finally become a little bit more seasonal. Temperatures getting a little bit milder than what they have been. Now we're back to good old rain. But I'm heading out of town. <laughs> so just a reminder, if you haven't heard already, uh, the trading room will be on hiatus for the next couple of weeks. I take, I'm going to take a little bit of a break. Francisco says, I've got my winter gear on, shorts and a t-shirt. Yeah, you guys get your storms early, though. What part of Florida are you in, Francisco? Do you guys get the uh, the hurricanes and everything blowing in off of the, uh, the Caribbean and the South Atlantic? Oh, Miami. Oh, shoot, you know all about uh, hurricane weather. You've seen your share of storms. <laughs> Francisco says, I've been through four. Yeah. I don't know. I might take a little bit of snow over, uh, over a hurricane. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't matter where you live. The weather's always an issue.
friend of mine actually, uh, who's a fellow trader, uh, moved to Ecuador of all places because I, I guess they have the most temperate climate on the planet, winter and summer. Never mind your 8,000 feet in the air, but uh, yeah, I guess it's like a 70 some odd degrees almost year round. Well, it seems like the theme du jour here is to move a little bit, then go into a sideways mode, move a little bit, go into sideways mode. Ah. Clayton says Ecuador does have nice weather. They're on the equator and they're surrounded by water, so it's very temperate. Yeah, my friend used to live in Florida, and I forget where he moved from there, but then he moved to Panama for a while. But I think the rain was getting to him there because of one time I spoke to him, he said it rained every day in August but one. So then he moved from Panama to Ecuador. That's where he's at now. Funny thing is, uh, the way the internet is and uh, telecom services and everything, he still has a North American phone number. So I can call him in Ecuador via his U.S. landline or U.S. phone number, however that works. Well, we are slowing down a bit here. There's no question about that. We're making a slow drift higher, but nothing to get too excited about. Oh, wow. Tony says, I used to live in Panama for five years. I've never been. It looks like a beautiful part of the world, though. I'm heading off to Laredo, Mexico, on the Baja Peninsula. Friends of ours have a, uh, a townhouse there in one of those resort communities. We went down to see them last year. It was just a lovely little community. So looking forward to a little bit of R&R &R down there. says if I'm phoning through a U.S. landline, it's a good way for the NSA to hear. Unless they're interested in trading, they won't like anything we're talking about. <laughs> they can listen all they want. We're talking about gold and cattle and uh, crude oil prices and whatever else he's trying to follow. Well, I'm wondering now, are we going to get another break to the short side? Or is this going to become our test of the extreme? And maybe a another buy signal. Our number two counter trend. The 
stock's been plotting along here this morning too. Our four arrow consolidation is actually drifting into like five and six arrow consolidations, which I normally don't like to see. But each of these consolidation patterns did translate into a decent move lower. Again, I would have abandoned the four arrow consolidation. I might have been interested in this macro pullback, but I would have probably ditched them both in favor of an OCO style order. And you can see in this one here, the breakout and the retest, it did work as per plan. We got the retest and then the next leg lower. This whole 53, 64, 75 area, our support zone on our support and resistance line. Buyers dug in their heels pretty good there. <laughs> At least for the time being. Like I say, they're in drifting mode again. Uh, Francisco asking, what's a good setting for a break-even trigger on the Hawk and the Eagle? I tend to go any value that's about 75 to 80 percent of my target. So with the NASDAQ on the Hawk, we have a $50 target. The NASDAQ is $5. Therefore, uh, that's 10 ticks. Uh, my break even is set at 8. With the uh, Eagle, we have a, a 40 tick target, which would be our $200 objective. So again, about 75% of that is about 30 ticks. 30, 80% would be 32 ticks. My reasoning is that if the market gets three quarters of the way to your profit objective um, and fails, well, then I would rather take a break even stop out. Now you can set the parameters higher if you want. You can demand 90%, in which case a 90% move on a on your eagle, your 40 tick target would be 36 ticks, 35, 36 ticks. Do remember that once your trade goes live, however, 
you can always manually adjust the break even if you're not really happy with it. All right, the buyer is really starting to hold this 53.64 three quarters area, 53.65. excuse me, or attempting to. They haven't pulled it out of the bag yet, but they're trying hard. Yeah, Tony says it's still making lower lows and lower highs. This is true. It may be nothing more than another sideways range. have been uh, in a downtrend though since the open and that's coming up on about an hour and 15 minutes, hour and 20 minutes. That's a long time for the market to be trending without any kind of even minor reversal. That's a very strong trending market. Maybe as they head into the lunch hour, uh, we could see a, a little bit of a pullback. It's not unusual to see the market, um, like I say, after it's been heading off in one direction all morning. To try to reverse on itself a little. And we don't have our number two signal just yet. Uh, it's a quick little sideways range here. Not as pronounced as the ones that were here or here.
another macro pullback. Uh, here they come. They're going to challenge the top end. Might see a bigger test of the extreme here. The Hawk and the Raptor both now into yellow bars. The Raptor actually producing a number two, a counter trend signal. A soft edge buy. Uh, Francisco asked, would, be, would presetting the following be good for the Hawk? Two contracts, target one at 11 ticks, target two at 20 ticks, break even at 8 ticks. Um, yes, anything around uh, $50 uh, profit objective for your Hawk, that's your scalping tool, tends to be a pretty good objective, uh, $50 being a very popular scalper's target. Now, Francisco, you're you're asking about you know running a certain number of contracts all the time. Um, your eagle settings, your suggested eagle settings, are fine as well. When you preset profit targets, folks, the thing to bear in mind is that the closer your profit objective is, the higher your win ratio will be. You will have more winning trades then you will have losing trades. However, it's unless you're trading a large account, it's very difficult to say, I'm always going to take two contracts. The reason is, one time your risk may be down here and the risk may be appropriate for your account size. The next time you may have to put your stop down here. Does that mean the trade is not any good? No, the signal may be just fine, but the market parameters are such that you need a deeper stop to start. But all of a sudden, instead of having $200 at risk, which might be acceptable for your position size, all of a sudden you have $400 at risk. 
and that may no longer be appropriate for your account. What if you have to place the stop down here and now all of a sudden you're risking $600? Now, you can always avoid the trade entirely. You could say, oh, okay, well, $600, I won't take the trade. And that's the smart thing to do. But that's why we use the trade manager and that's why most times we just let the risk percent mode tell us what our position should be. So you need to be careful if you're always going to trade a certain number of contracts, you have to be in the back of your mind, you have to be aware of how much your risk is. You don't want to be risking an, an amount that is not appropriate for your capital because that's when you're going to run into, into trouble. But as far as profit targets go, the tighter your profit target, the better your win ratio, of course, the smaller your earnings. Now, there's two schools of thought. One school of thought says, Take your profit when you have it. Try to manage your stops as efficiently as you can. So when you take a losing trade, you don't wipe out too many of your winners. The other school of thought says you should always try to maximize your winners. Be less aggressive with your stops. Try to run the market out. The only right answer, both ways work, by the way. The only right answer is the one that you are most comfortable with. Here in the trading room, you'll see me take profit on target most of the time because that's what I'm comfortable with. But look, uh, this number one signal, had I had the nerve to ride out that number one signal, I could have maybe gone with a an ATR stop and it would have managed it just fine. I would have got stopped out down here on this reversal. And now I could be using an ATR stop on my number two signal to go long. I could try to ride that one out as far as I could. But that does not suit my personality. Would I have made more money? Well, let's take a look here. I think this is the same signal. put the ATRs on. So we would have shorted from up here somewhere and we would have been stopped out down here. Oh, three contracts. One second here. So $245. Yes, I would have done a little bit better. Uh, not much. I would have made about another 40 bucks or so. $40, $50. But at the end of the day, trading is a very personal exercise. I can tell you, you know, these are the profit targets that I use, but if you want to, you know, go for bigger profit targets or smaller profit targets, one of our room members uh, on the Hawk scalped out when he had three ticks. Now, I do believe he was trading multiples, you know, to make it more worth his while, but when he was up three ticks, he said, thank you very much, see you later.
A uh, great question here from uh, Curtis. Curtis asks, if you have profit targets in your favor, do you have loss targets when the trade is against you? Yes. Uh, again, normally I allow the trade manager to contain my risk. I try to run my stops above or below a fundamental uh, area of support or resistance. Typically that means it's going to be a swing high or low. It doesn't mean that it's always nearby which is what freaks a lot of people out. So this signal here duplicated the Raptor signal. So I'm just looking here at the Falcon chart. Where's the correct place, would you say, to put your stop loss for this signal? So here's the signal we're looking at. We're going to pretend we're going to take it right on the hash mark. Where's the appropriate place to put a stop? Here, 53.89. Here, 53.96, or up here at 54.01? Well, you can put your stop anywhere you want, but the closer your stop is, the more likely it is that you're going to get stopped out, right? I would probably uh, not take the stop right here. That would be a little bit too cozy for me. I could see the market bringing me in and then just reversing enough to stop me out and head lower. That's a little bit too tight. As a rule of thumb, I look to go two swings back. So this is swing one, this is swing two. It's unusual for a market to recover two full swings without reversing on itself entirely. So that would be my initial stop. And the trade looks very lopsided because I have so much at risk and so little on the reward side. But this is only my safety net, right? I know it's contained, it's an amount that I can afford. This is a worst case scenario. The market brings me in and then just goes boom, B lines higher and I don't get a chance to get out. But what typically happens is if the market reverses at this point, is that somewhere through here, probably right about there, we'll see another hesitation. And the sellers try to recommit to the downtrend. At this point, I can take my stop from up here. I know it's no longer necessary to have that big of a stop and play, bring my stop down here now. Now if prices reverse and stop me out, I'll get stopped out instead of $240, it looks like approximately half, maybe $140 loss. So if this amount was 2% of my capital, this loss here is roughly about 1% of my capital. Oh, I see Curtis says uh, that wasn't quite what I was at. He asks, do you peel off contracts on a losing trade or do you exit all at once? I exit all at once. I'm not a big believer in averaging in or out of a position. This is, like I say, my safety net. I'm on the high wire. If I fall, this is going to keep me from going splat. And that's all this is meant to do. I don't want to say, oh, well, maybe I'll put another safety net a little bit lower in case the market isn't finished falling yet. Mm, no. That's, again, why I go with the fundamental uh, 
support or resistance area. We've seen active buying down here. We know I'm going to say 5365, just for rounding sake, is a sensitive area. Price has been falling since the open for nearly, well, uh, an hour and a half almost. And now all of a sudden, they can't go any lower. Think about that for a moment. The buyer, the sellers haven't been screaming lower, but they have been controlling the market all the same, all morning long. They are in total control. They are dominant. Every time the buyers try to push back, the sellers push them lower for an hour and a half. Now all of a sudden the sellers can't push anymore. What does that tell you? That tells you the buyers are saying, no more. We're pushing back. This is it. So this is obviously a pretty strong area of support. Now we're going to see how far the buyers can move the market. Are they going to be able to, you know, recover, get back into... Uh, today's range, what did we say was a sticky number here, 53, 75, 76? Well, we're back there now. Are they going to be able to push above that, get back to the hard edge to around 5380? That was a significant number for us as well. All right, Curtis. Uh, Curtis says he's going to shoot me an email. I'm sorry, I'm misinterpreting your, your question. Uh, Christian asks, Eric, when I use a trade manager with a max risk of a half percent and use the same account for the YM and the NQ, I get different risk amounts between the YM and the NQ. How can this happen? Um, are you sure it's not just a rounding error? Christian, depending on where you're placing your stop loss. Try placing your stop loss, you know, 20 ticks away on both or 40 ticks or whatever. The amount should be the same. Okay, looking for the buyers trying to recover this market here. Give us one more push higher. Being a little bit stubborn at the moment. Crude oil is trying to head a little bit lower this morning. Gold made a nice rally up and they're kind of setting up for another rally. Here's a possible red bar buy on gold. Market waffling a little bit. Hmm. 
Now we've come back with a hard edge bounce, not quite what I was hoping to see. Okay, now it's all up to the buyers. They gotta pull it together here from this kind of top end of the mini trading range that we saw. So we have a tiny breakout. Now here comes the retest. We'll see whether or not they can muster a rally from there. I'm hoping for at least one bullish bar. This, of course, the whole problem whenever you try to go counter trend. They want to go higher, they just haven't figured it out yet. Come on, get up there. Let's go. All right, gang, I've got to close up the room a little bit early. Uh, I've still got a few things to get ready before we head off tomorrow. Again, a reminder, trading room closed for the next couple of weeks. Do be careful. Tomorrow is going to be a very uh, difficult trading day. It's going to be more of the same, more sidewaysness until those FOMC minutes come out in the afternoon. You may choose just to stand aside altogether. And um, yeah, take care. I will see you when I get back. We'll talk to you soon. Bye for now.